Okay, so let's find an electron, right? We want to locate an electron. We want to find uh, its position, right? But the other thing we also want to figure out, right? So how we want to we want to determine its position, right? We also want to determine the momentum of the electron, and we want to do it simultaneously. Let's just pretend that we want to do that. Well, the only way I know how to find an electron is to look at it. So I'm going to use photons to do that. Well, photons have a momentum that is inversely proportional to their wavelength, okay? So if you look at this thing, a small wavelength photon has a big momentum, and a big wavelength photon has a small momentum. Now, let's suppose I want to locate exactly where the thing is. That's the most important thing to me. Well, if I want to do that, I want to use a small wavelength, right? Small wavelength means I have higher resolution, correct? Right? High resolution. We, we know this, right? Okay? So the uncertainty of that is about the size of the wavelength, right? Okay? Well, if I use a small photon, a small uh, wavelength photon to locate the electron, remember that small wavelength photons have a large momentum. So I have, if, if this is small, this is going to be big, right? So if I make that really, really small, the uncertainty of my momentum is big. And the reason it's big is that I just hit it with a photon. It, I have no idea what its momentum is now because I just hit it with a bullet, right? It goes flying. Who knows, right? Okay. Now, let's suppose that I really want to know, I really want to know the momentum of it. I don't care so much about where it is. I want to find the momentum of it, right? Well, then I'm going to use something that doesn't have a lot of momentum, right? I want to use a photon that isn't going to disturb the momentum of my electron. So I use a small momentum photon. Well, a small momentum photon has a huge wavelength, right? And therefore, if I make this small, by uncertainty, I, I have no idea where it is. I've just used a giant photon to locate it, right? Okay, so it, essentially what this means is that if I'm using photons or, or, and this actually applies to any way of locating the electron, okay, if I'm using photons though, for sure, um, there's no way that I can know its position. If I want to know its position exactly, I give up my information about its momentum, right? And if I want to find its momentum exactly, I, I am going to have no idea exactly what its, what its position is, okay? This is, of course, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay, um, and then this is the argument we've just been making, right? Okay, this is the um, this is the uncertainty principle. Okay, uh, you will see it when you I believe when you see it, um, you're going to see it as in, there's something called h bar, right? Which I believe is uh, just Planck's constant over two pi. Okay, so, so it's given in terms of that, but this is how it is in our data packet, so that's how we're going to use it. Okay, so this is the notion. Uh, uncertainty principle states that uh, you cannot simultaneously know the position and momentum of a particle, okay, some object, right? Um, they just can't be known simultaneously. And th this is called the electron microscope uh, uh, reasoning behind that, right? Understand that, that this uncertainty is in, inherent in nature. It's not something that, you know, depends on us using photons or apparently cigarettes or something like that to locate uh, the electron, right? Um, and then there's another one that involves energy. Um, this is uh, one of the most bizarre ones is that actually energy is not exactly conserved. It's actually uncertain, okay? So there's, there's energy and time, right? So these are the two un uh, uncertainty conditions, right? the indeterminacy principle. Um, and then just a word, uh, when we talk about uncertainty, we've been, we've been used to talking about half the uncertainty, we say plus or minus 0.2, but the, when we, we use our delta x, we use the range of it. So if it's plus or minus 0.2, the uncertainty of it is actually 0.4, okay? So let's, uh, let's do an example of this. Uh, oh, wait, not an example. We've got to talk about some weird things, right? So this is a weird thing about quantum mechanics, right? Observing an electron with a photon affects the reality, right? Measuring its position changes its momentum, right? So that, that's a weird thing, right? Uh, energy is not conserved, right? 
uh, for some short period of time, uh, uh, nothing can become something, right? This is a, this is a weird thing, right? Um, Non-determinism, right? Uh, determinism is the notion that like, if I throw a ball into the air, we can predict exactly where it will land, right? Um, not so true for electrons, more true for, for a ball, okay? Uh, just because this Planck's constant is really, really small, it affects uh, electrons, not so much baseballs, okay? Um, and then this is just a strange thing, right, is that, that there are certain events that are just random. Quantum theory predicts with marvelous accuracy the exact uh, probability of things happening, but that's all it does is, is it predicts probabilities and nothing more. Um, this is the dice uh, that that uh, Einstein believed that God did not play with, right? Okay, and then of course quantum electrodynamics is this this uh, very wonderful theory uh, that is very strange, right? The the idea of uh, let's say we have a positive charge here, right, and another positive charge. How do they repel each other? How do they exert a force over a distance? Well. Feynman came up with a theory that, that said that, that force-carrying particles, in this case photons, are boiling out of the vacuum around these things. They exist for a short period of time. They borrow energy from the vacuum for a short period of time, exist to mediate this force. Um, and that's, you know, that's very bizarre, but it works. This is one of our best uh, theories. It is the theory, okay? So, um, yeah. Okay, now it's example time, right? Uh, what is the uncertainty position of a baseball? Well, you know, it's going to be nothing, but let's figure it out, right? Okay, so our um, uncertainty of x, uncertainty of momentum is equal to what? Planck's constant over 4 pi. Okay, so we just have to figure out uh, uh, the uncertainty of our momentum, right? And then we can just plug in here, right? Okay, so uncertainty of x, and then the uncertainty of our momentum is going to be 0.145 kilograms, right? And then, uh, let's see, uh, and then the mass is, or the velocity, the uncertainty is going to be, um, I think it's going to be 0.6 meters per second, right? So that the uncertainty of velocity is, uh, is 0.6 because it's going to be the range of this, right? Okay, and then that equals uh, 6.626 e minus 34 uh, divided by 4 pi. Okay, and so isn't that going to be just this whole thing here, this whole side divided by this thing, right? Okay, so 6.626 e minus 34 uh, times 0.145 uh, times 0.6, right? Whoops, what am I doing? What am I doing? Okay, see, so, okay, so uh, divided by four divided by pi, so 6.626 divided by four divided by pi, right? And then divided by 0.145 divided by 0.6, right? So I'm gonna divide by this. And I get 6.06.06 times 10 to the minus 34th meters, right? Okay, so, um, yeah, so so that that's basically zero, right? And that's smaller than the smallest thing by many orders of magnitude, okay? Like like a, 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 the nucleus of an atom is ten to the minus fifteenth, for example, 